So in the Nerf ecosystem, there are three main types of blasters which you're going to be sporting on events. On one hand, you've got the practical stuff. Stuff like the Hyperfire, the Turbine, the Phoenix, the Strife. Stuff that really doesn't offer you anything new or interesting, but instead takes current ideas and makes them better and more optimized for combat. On the other hand, you've got the tactical stuff. Stuff like the Centurion, the Flip 32, the Mega Double Breach. Things that you really aren't going to get an advantage by using on the field. In fact, you'd probably be seen as using a handicap if you're going to be running any of these blasters. But they're a lot more fun and a lot sillier to play with. And you can enjoy these things more when you're just plinking. And then there's the third mysterious category that I haven't touched upon yet. You're probably thinking it's a combination of these things, like for example, the Ultra Select or the Elite 2.0 Moto Blitz, but no, it is a new category. A category I refer to as obliterating your enemies before they even see you coming. There are only a couple blasters that fit into this category. For example. <laughs> All right, so if my incoherent intro didn't make any sense, and it probably didn't, today we're going to be reviewing the rival Percy's, or the Perseys, if you want to talk real, real fancy about it. So this blaster, if you couldn't tell, is literally the definition of overkill. That's what it is. There is no practical or reasonable purpose to use this thing stock on the battlefield without some major, major upgrades, to the capacity at least. But good lord, I have never had more fun shooting a primary class blaster ever. Not even the hyperfire is more fun than this thing. Now you're probably asking, well, you have a Prometheus, isn't that just as but way bigger? Yes, it is. And the Prometheus is way more fun to shoot than this. But here's the thing. That is a specialty blaster. It, the grip is on top of the blaster. On top. It's supposed to be underneath it. I cannot reasonably call the Prometheus a primary class blaster because it has its own league of things that you need to do with it. Like, it's on, it's on a whole different level. A completely different one. Not a better or worse one, just a different one. So it can't really be compared to something like this. But all that being said, I've got a lot of things to say about the Percy's. Just going over the cosmetics of the blaster before we take a look at anything even revolving it, it is, oh, it is the nicest looking primary I own. It's just so swept back and ergonomic and angular and just so, mmm, it's bad and badass and it's like, oh, it's so aggressive. Like, everybody's afraid of you if you walk into the nerf field with this thing. And even when you flip the blaster over and you inevitably come to the problem of there's, there's no paint over here, it doesn't look too bad. It does not affect how cool the Percy's looks. All these little details right here, this blue piece of plastic that goes over the front and just like these little grills and everything on it, it just, it looks so premium and so cool and sick. It's like, I can't talk enough about how awesome the blaster looks, but we still got a lot of things to talk about, so I'm gonna stop myself here. The ergonomics. All right, this is kind of where things start going to crap. The ergonomics, first of all, the main grip. Oh yeah, I love this. I love this main grip. You've got a nice, comfy, filleted, smooth handhold. It's a very big grip. Anybody can be happy with this. It does have a thumb hole stock, but it's such a large gaping thumb hole stock that you don't really feel affected by it in any way. The rev trigger, I mean, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to slide this open so that I can actually show you what I mean. The rev trigger is very smooth. It feels nice. Your finger just dents right into it. The firing trigger is hilarious because it has all this detail and it moves less than a centimeter. But considering how unbelievably fast the rate of fire of this is, that's not a problem. Just like all the rivals, it has a safety. And the safety is actually pretty important because it holds the rev trigger up so you cannot pull the rev trigger down, which actually helps because the gaping hole on this is so big that things might actually fit in there and press down the rev trigger and then your blaster is revving for a really long time. That's not a problem I face because I have the wall but it's something that you would face if you had this thing like in a bucket or a bin or something like that. And there is one other caveat that they did to fix that problem. We'll get to that in a minute though. The stock is insultingly short. I mean look at this. Look how short the stock is. It barely comes up halfway to my arm and it, it feels tiny. It feels so small on this blaster. I feel like they could have easily, easily made this thing longer and flatter, gave it more capacity, and just made that stock a more reasonable length. I have no clue why they made it so short, 
but the stock is very comfortable. It is a very nice, smooth stock. The cheek rest, well, there isn't really one. You just kind of put your face on the top of the blaster and it has an iron sight that does not have any rear iron sight. So the sight's kind of useless. And it also means that aiming this is a colossal waste of time, which comes with its own set of problems. We'll get to that in a minute though. Let's talk about the battery. Now, this is a premium rival blaster product. It has a rechargeable battery and you can see that battery right here. It says rival on it, it's just upside down. That's a rechargeable battery. How do you get it out? Because with most of the time with stuff like this, you have to get a screwdriver and then you have to unscrew it and then you have to take the screw and then it, it, the battery's already out. That's how fast it is. This little mechanism right here, you have a slide to pull back to do this with and then it has a little safety to keep that slide in place. Two fingers, one finger to push that down, one to pull it back to release the battery. It is buttery smooth, super fast and flawless. They should do this with everything. Putting the battery back in though is a completely, it's already in. I'm being serious. It's that fast. Taking the, taking the magazine hopper thing out and replacing that is slower than replacing the rechargeable battery. Like, what kind of engineers did this? They're geniuses and I appreciate them way more than I should. It's even faster than replacing a lipo, cause then with a the lipo, you have to get your hand in there and fiddle with it for like 20 minutes until it finally unplugs and then try and plug it back in. And it's just like, it's such a waste of time. And then with this thing, you do this and the battery just pops out. It even has a spring release in there to make it as fast and easy as humanly possible. This is wonderful. Why didn't they do this with the Mac 100? And I said that right before, you can take the hopper out. You see this thing? Look at this. Look at this! It is a 50 round hopper. Actually, it's a 51 round hopper. You see, there's that one extra round. That comes out and it has a lanyard. A lanyard! So that you can carry more of these! The mechanism to do this is just as simple as the battery one. You take this thing, you pull it back like a bolt handle for a springer or something. And then, look, look at that, the whole thing moves back. It's like a locking nub that moves back so that it just springs up. And because of that triangular shape, it also pushes the magazine up a little bit so you have the best grip possible. This is a magazine hopper fed fully automatic eight to nine round capacity blast. Oh my God, I can't, I can't gush about this enough. And then when you actually wanna put that back in, it literally just falls into place and it's already ready to shoot again. And that rev up time, that is stealth rev up time. What do I mean by that? I mean that the rev up is so fast that you would be able to rev it up and start firing before your opponent even knows you're there. That's why I call this the obliterate your enemies before they see you coming blaster. It literally does that. The foregrip is non-existent. It is just a flat slab that your hand fits on and it's super uncomfortable and I really don't like it. And I wish that this tack rail was longer so I could put a modulus foregrip or something on there. That's my only complaint with this thing. I'm just gonna say it now. And like most blasters like this, it has sling points on the best places possible, right under the grip and right at the bottom of the front next to the barrel. I mean, whoever the designer of this blaster is, well done. Well done, Hasbro. You outdid yourself when you, when you released this blaster. It's so good that I'm sure that's why they chose this design when they released the Mach 100. This thing is flawless. The Mac 100 just gave it a couple extra flaws, but I've already complained about the Mac 100 plenty in my other videos, so I'm not gonna say anything else about it. As for the firing demo, <laughs> I've been waiting for this part of the video. Leroy! The blaster is completely empty on rounds. I drained it in 10 seconds. And that cringe-inducing Leroy Jenkins laugh is literally how I run into the field when I'm using this. I cannot hold myself back from yelling that. So after everything we have discussed today, what is my opinion on the rival Percy's or the Perkays? Well, it's good. And I really think that everybody should have two of them in their collection with one major upgrade. 
one that I have not talked about at all in this video. The capacity is terrible. I drained it in 10 seconds. However, a company that you may or may not know called Out of Jars make an extension, uh, I, and oh my goodness, I cannot speak, an extension, which basically you just put it on top of the gun and just go snap right into place. 150 rounds, problem solved, bingo, bango, bongo. You have a large tube on top of the blaster, but that fix is the only problem. Now, instead of draining it in 10 seconds, you'll drain it in 30. In all honesty though, even with the terrible capacity, this blaster is great. I absolutely love it to absolute pieces. I cannot current, I cannot practically go into enough detail to describe through words how awesome this blaster is. It is so much fun. It is so useful. It is so optimized. It is everything right about the Nerf Rival series. They took Rival and optimized it and maxed out those optimizations completely with this. It is definitely the best release in the Rival series when you are looking for a fast paced, fully automatic machine gun style blaster that does not have weird ergonomics. The Nemesis may have more capacity, but there are multiple problems with that blaster that this thing fixes, such as the problems with loading the hopper. Loading this one is much easier with this big door on the top that gives you access to the whole thing. It has better ergonomics than the Nemesis did. The weighting is a bit more balanced than the Nemesis was. And it's just, it's just a better blaster overall. It's smaller and easier to use. I mean, Get this one. This one's great. The Nemesis is not a bad blaster. I mean, it's absolutely magnificent, and I definitely want to get one someday. But for the money, and with the hopper extension that you could potentially put on this thing, this thing is better than the Nemesis. In every way. Literally every way. Except the stock is hilariously short. But I, I don't know. It's so hard to come up with things to say about this that are negative because the blaster just radiates positive energy because I'm sure the designer had way too much fun making it. If you ever see a Percy's on sale, buy one. Please pick one up. You won't be disappointed. Especially if that Percy's just happens to cost $70 and you're torn between this one and the Mach 100. This one is better than the Mach 100. The Mac is fun, but this one is better. Thanks for watching. I'll see y'all next time.